Howdy folks, Moose here. Got a short uh, user report on the new Z404.5. Now, technically it's not like brand new. It's been out for a while. I've been shooting with it for a few months now. I gotta tell you, it is probably one of the most delightful telephoto scratch up any lens I've ever had the opportunity to shoot with. I absolutely love this lens. I love it to pieces. Now, what am I comparing it to? Well, go back a little bit in time. I started off with the Nikkor 405.6 EDIF lens. This really small 22 ounce manual focus lens. It was my only telephoto lens for the first six years of my career. And that lens, besides delivering incredible images, taught me so many lessons about wildlife photography, many of them that I still depend on and I share with you today. You're gonna have the same experience, but much better with the Z404.5. Now, when it comes to sharpness, a very common question, the 400, the Z400 4.5, compared to the 400 millimeter end of the 180 to 400 VR lens, as far as I am concerned, anecdotal, my own personal shooting and looking, because I don't shoot charts and that kind of stuff, just real world out there shooting, the Z400 4.5 is at least at the very bottom line as sharp as that 400 end of the 18400. And you know how I think that lens is just a smashingly great lens. Is it better? Could be. A uh, real good, common question, how is this stacked against the old 500 PF? Old, it's only a few years old, right? But it's now considered old. It's F mount, it's a Z mount. If this lens, as far as I'm concerned, is sharper than that lens, especially when you put the 1.4 teleconverter on. And when it comes to lens speed, off focus speed, those other things are really important. I just think this lens just, you know, rockets beyond the rest of them. The only lens I can't really give you, and it's a common question, comparison against is the 404.5 Z lens against the Z 402.8. I have not shot the 2.8 model. I would love to. I hear it's spectacular. I can't imagine that uh, they're that far apart if there is any distance in sharpness. Now, with that said, what is happening here mechanically? There's a couple of things going on I want you to know about. First, foremost, it's only 41 ounces. It's considered the smallest and lightest 400 millimeter in its range. And it is incredibly light. And on the Z9, that's the only thing I've shot it on is the Z9. It is incredibly, incredibly well balanced. With that said, it has a six stop VR motor. And the VR motor's got some new technology and I am gonna be point blank honest, I have no clue what they're talking about. It's got something called voice coil motor. Uh, I don't know what that is. I just know it really, really works well. And when you're attached to the Z9, you get that six stops of vibration reduction. That's pretty cool. Now, when it comes to inside the glass, which is essential, uh, I wanna go back again to history for a second. That 405.6 EDIF lens. I asked a number of optical engineers back in the day, why was it so incredibly sharp? Because it was corner to corner, edge to edge, sharp. sharp. And this lens, by the way, is sharper than that 405.6. Now, what they told me back then was that 400 millimeter, that focal length of lens, is the easiest mathematically to assemble, you know, uh, on paper and then to manufacture and, and put it all together, that 400 millimeter. I have to assume that's probably still true. And when you add in the 55 millimeter uh, rear dimension, that Z mount size, I mean, there's just, it's just a, Unbelievable, I'm almost speechless, just how amazing this lens is. Now the glass, okay, it's got uh, ED glass, which has always been very, very important to telephoto lenses. It also has super ED glass. Um, uh, yeah, I have no idea what that means. It has uh, fluoride coatings, nano coatings. It's got all the whiz bangs you can imagine in optical design in here. And, and I just can tell you, the thing's bloody sharp. Couple things about actually using the lens. Now we got through the technical stuff, okay? Because this is really what's important to me. Uh, first, you can notice I have lens coat on the front two pieces. That's because I stick this out the car window a lot. I'm shooting from the truck seat. 
And I don't want this getting all brassed up. So the lens coat, great protection for the lens. Really important. Next, it's important when you use hand-holding technique, proper hand-holding technique, that you have the camera comfortably seated in the palm of your hand and pulling back to your eye and rolling your finger on the shutter release. So if I'm gonna be shooting on a tripod, I'm gonna have the collar turned around, have the really right stuff foot in the head, and the tripod head I'm using with this lens is the small rig fluid, lightweight fluid head. It's small, it's light, and it works so great with this lens, especially if I wanna shoot video. It's fluid panning, it's spectacular. So on a tripod with that head, you can see the foot is down here. Now, if I'm gonna use flash, I have a flash bracket, which will attach to the, this foot, and then the flash will go right there and it'll be right above the lens axis, whether I shoot vertically or horizontally, because the tripod collar itself is what's gonna rotate. And for that reason, I have the foot on here. If I'm not shooting on a tripod, I am not using a flash handheld, I'm gonna take this foot off. That is the way I'm gonna shoot majority of the time with this lens, handheld. Now the lens coat allows me to quickly find the auto, the uh, manual focusing ring. It's an old habit to manually focus. Ah, I'm doing it less and less uh, because of the way this lens operates. Get to that in a second. But I'm gonna ri get rid of this foot and turn the collar around for a simple reason. It's kind of like when woodworking. You wanna have as much mass touching each other when you do a glue joint for stability. Same thing when you're hand holding. I want as much lens barrel resting in my palm when I'm hand holding, just so I have as much stability as possible. Now let's talk about focusing, shooting. I'm using the Z9, only shot this with the Z9. Uh, the part of this that's really important, I'm using either autofocus, auto area AF, animal eye detection, straight auto area AF, or 3D eye detection for either critter or mechanical. Uh, Mechanicals have shot a number of ground air shots of aircraft with this lens. I've shot the white-tailed deer that bop around our, the ranch here. But the primary use for this lens is for me to bebop around and photograph birds. Now what does bebop around mean? Uh, Sharon and I like to go on walks and she has binoculars. And I always wanted a simple lens I could pull up and photograph critters I see on my walk. And the 180-400 and 800, while they're spectacular lenses, they don't really, you know, are advantageous for bebopping around because you have this big thing on a tripod. You kind of like stick out like a sore thumb. This on a strap on your side really kind of just melts away. No one sees it. Now, in those autofocus modes, hand-holding, just walking around, hit the back button because I'm back button focusing. Quite often, the camera acquires and locks on focus faster than my eye and brain can say, it's sharp. That's how quick it's operating. It's spectacular. Now, it has a minimum focusing distance of 8.2, but the distance, physical distance from the front of the shade to that subject, when you're getting close physically and you don't have to manually focus to get to the minimum focusing distance for this lens, that distance from the front of the shade to the subject is just about six feet. That gives you spectacular image sizes. Uh, you can see, for example, in this photograph of the semi-palmated sandpiper. You're talking about a bird that's about the size of your computer mouse. You can see how it fills the frame. And it really wasn't quite yet at the MFD. Now, that is really kind of the, the, the essence of this lens is photographing birds and photographing them in their environment to tell their story. Uh, I had the opportunity a week ago to lie on a beach on the East Coast and for an hour had birds, shorebirds landing and then a group of them would go by and photograph them, another group would go by and we kept just photographing them as they went by and I was lying in the sand, elbows there, just shooting away and this lens just knocked it out of the park. Now you're seeing it with the most common way I have it set up, that's with the Z 1.4. You can use the Z1.4 or the Z2X. With the 1.4, you have a 560F 6.3. And with the 2X, you have a 800F9. Now, think about this for a second. You have an 800 millimeter lens that focuses to 8.2 feet or 6 feet in front of the shade. Amazing image size. Now, you got to ask yourself, what about quality? 
couple things. First, with a 1.4 or 2x, autofocus speed and sharpness, you will see no difference with them on or off. The same sharpness is maintained through all that process. But what's really important to me is there's no vignetting. Zippo. With the 1.4 or the 2x, there is no vignetting. It is absolutely a spectacular image quality. It is one thing I need to warn you about on this lens that I have found myself is it has a, a limit switch. Okay, so it focuses from MFD to infinity or from infinity to, uh, I got my glasses on, I think it says six meters. That switch in my camera bag seems to get knocked from full, where I have it all the time, to the limit switch. That's the only, only thing that I've found about this lens that I might even get close to saying is a negative. You know, this, there's a lot of lenses out there for you to select from when it comes to wildlife photography. I really, really encourage you to buy one that not only delivers what you need as a photographer, but gives you time in the field. And with this price tag, and I know it sounds high, but in this day and age, $3,200 for an incredibly, incredibly sharp, versatile telephoto lens, it's not that much money. So... For myself, I am absolutely in love with this lens. It is, it's doing more than I thought. It has taken my love affair, that 405.6, and just elevated to the point where I, did, I just almost I cannot stop shooting this lens. I want you to go out and try it. It's gonna solve a lot of your problems. It's gonna get some great images, and it's just gonna make you smile all day long. This is the Z 404.5 lens, great lens. And when you're out there shooting, folks, remember to make every click your story.